forward rates don't really exist on their own. They are implied by spot rates. Forward rates link two different spot rates. In order to solve for the implied forward rate, all that I need to do is specify a spot rate curve. Spot rates are also called zero rates, so we can call this a zero rate curve, highlight in orange here, and plot it here in orange, where I've just imagined a spot rate curve that starts at 3% and extends to a five-year spot or zero rate of 5.3%. As I've said before, it's important to specify or understand when we see an interest rate, what is the compound frequency? I'm following John Hull here with continuous compounding. So that means this 3% specifically is a one year spot or zero rate of 3% per annum with continuous compounding. The 4% is a two year spot or zero rate of 4% per annum with continuous compounding. If I have the zero rates, I can then extract the implied forward rates because by definition, that's what they are. The forward rates are the rates that are implied by the zero rates. And if the compound frequency is continuous, we can rely on elegant math, which is to say that the no arbitrage idea tells us to expect on the left-hand side that we might invest at the shorter spot rate, which I'll denote R sub one, over its period or maturity, which I'll denote T sub one. So here we have the expression for the cumulative return continuously if we're able to invest at this spot rate over this number of years. And then if we can roll over into the forward rate, we can multiply by whatever that forward rate is. We don't we might know it, not know it right now. And I'll just assume at one year. So then now we are, have an expression for the cumulative return at the end of T1 plus one year, if we're able indeed to roll over at the forward rate. The no arbitrage idea tells us that what we, should, what we are entitled to expect is the same cumulative return as if we are, were to invest at the longer short rate, which I'll denote R sub T, over its maturity, denoted T sub two. So that's the essential idea. It does ignore issues like liquidity and a risk premium. So it's fairly pure in that sense. We might say it's not realistic, but it, this is the forward rate that links the two spot rates that we observe. And I'll we'll be more specific now about this one year forward rate because I don't need it to be a one year forward rate. It can be, it's really the forward rate that's the difference between T2 and T minus one. So I'll just say T2 minus T1 there. And now I've been very specific about this forward rate. So that if I, now it's easy to solve for this because I can divide each side, right, by E raised to the, or the natural exponential function of R1 times T1 and that means that this division becomes a subtraction. That's the uh, natural log math that's so elegant. And so that what I have here is E raised to the R2 T2 minus R1 T1 is equal to here on the left, E raised to the forward rate that we're solving for, um, multiplied by the difference between the uh, maturities so that I can take the natural log of both sides. And so I really just have the, what were the, what were the ex, in the exponents now becomes the basic equation. And then I can solve for the forward rate just by dividing by this difference. So that under this continuous compounding, my forward rate that is implied by the spot rates is then a pretty elegant um, R2 T2 minus R1 T1 divided by the T2 minus T1 right there. And that's under continuous compounding. So that's what I have solved for right here. And so for example, the 5% that's shown here, this is a one year forward rate. And we could say, it's always a little tricky as to where you line these up, but 
we generally line up the 5% at two years to say this is the one year forward rate during the second year. So it's plotted right here. And it's the 5% that's implied by this 3% and by this 4%. And we could denote it as this 5% forward rate as the one year forward rate starting at year one and ending at year two. See the one year forward rate during year during the second year or between the end of year one and the end of year two. And in this case, with that 5%, right, it's a forward rate that is equal to uh, our two-year spot rate of 4% multiplied by its maturity of two, per, of two years so minus the one-year forward rate of 3% multiplied by its one years divided by two years minus one years, which is just one. So we have 8% minus 3%, or we have the 5% forward rate. So that's how we get the forward rates when it's continuously compounded. And we also could alternatively get the zero rates if they are discreetly compounded. So here I have the same exact spot rate curve imagined that starts at 3%, but now with a subtle difference. This 4% is a two-year spot or zero rate per annum with annual compounding. And now the idea is essentially the same. It's just the math that's a little bit different. So if I consider the same no, no arbitrage idea, then I'm saying that if I invested this time discreetly at the shorter spot rate over the number of years associated with that maturity. And then I'm able to roll over at the forward rate. And I'm going to say, I'm going to assume it's one year here, but really we know it's going to be T2 minus T1. And then I should have the same expectation as if I invested at the longer spot or zero rate over its number of years. So that solving for the forward rate, the math is similar really. 1 plus R1 to T1. And then I'm just going to keep it simple with a one year forward rate. We will we'll see that the one year forward rate then just subtracts the one. So that my five, what I had, a, what I previously got in 5% under continuous, if I do it discreetly now, and I'll just play it out specifically, I would take one plus the longer spot rate raised to its maturity, divide by one plus the shorter spot rate raised to its maturity, and then I just remember to subtract one, and I get the five point. 0.01%, slightly larger number here. That's the implied forward rate with annual compounding that is implied by these two zero rates that are also with annual compound frequency. So I hope that's helpful.